Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I think we've got something crazy for you today. This puzzle on screen is called Windmill, and it's by Leroy. And um, Leroy's been producing some incredible, incredible puzzles recently, and I've done I've done a couple of them. And but this one, let me just show you what I've just found when I went to Logic Masters Germany um, to look at the comments here. So we've got SKTX, fantastic constructor. The logic here is beautiful, very enlightening solve, wonderful puzzle. KNT, the, another new constructor, but also absolutely prolifically brilliant. This blows Kashmir out of the water. Well, I did Kashmir on the channel, and that was an incredible puzzle. Playmaker 6174, not only a brilliant constructor, but probably one of the most prolific solvers of Sudoku in the world describes this as one of my all-time favourite puzzles for sure. Fistemafell, what a beauty. Totally normal cat, amazing. anti extremely clever and beautiful. I mean, these are some of the greatest judges of Sudoku that you could ever put together. And basically they are raving about this puzzle. So this should be something quite, quite extraordinary. Um, based on my experience with Kashmir, I can tell you this is probably brutally hard as well. You will be able to judge. If I have managed to solve it, you can look at the length of the video, obviously, and see how hard I've, I've, I've struggled with it. But um, I am definitely looking forward to having a go at this. Now, before I do that, though, I want to say a very, very happy birthday to Blaine. Blaine, I think it's your birthday today. Your girlfriend, Tracy, told us this and said that you enjoy watching the channel. So I hope you have a brilliant day with bucket loads of cake. Actually, I should thank Mark. Actually, Mark bought more. Blah, Mark, Mark bought me a birthday cake from the Hummingbird Bakery, and it was a great big chocolate cake. Um, and yeah, I started to eat it yesterday, and I didn't stop for quite a long time. My waistline is protesting, uh, but my taste buds are not. So, Mark, thank you very much for my cake. Much appreciated. Um, now, what else do I need to tell you about? Well, more of you have managed to solve the Paint by Numbers Institute doctoral Sudoku pack over on Patreon right now. So very well done to Alan Bagg, to John Andrew McCulloch, to Nathan Cox and to Ian Danker. Fantastic solving, all of you. Um, a quick heads up as well. The other thing we've got on Patreon at the moment is uh, the video where Mark and I both solve Sam Kavanagh Johnson's classic Sudoku. And uh, now if you want to have a go at that classic Sudoku, you absolutely can. There's a link to it under this video. So have a go at it, see how you get on. Um, all I'll tell you about that puzzle is that there is a trick. If you don't know the trick, it's quite hard. Let me tell you that. If you do know the trick, then it's not. And it's a really, really cool trick. So um, we've got a video about that puzzle on Patreon right now. Um, but on the main channel, uh, we released a bonus video this morning where Mark takes a crack at um, Dean Mayer's uh, cryptic crossword, which is a bit of a tribute um, to one of the doyens of the crossword community, Neil Shepard, who died unexpectedly uh, recently. He used to construct under the name Alberich. Um, so yeah, do check out that video. Wonderful puzzle and a wonderful tribute. Um, and then Lots of you have been asking, where is, where is the video on how to solve adventure? Adventure being this puzzle that I always describe as the hardest puzzle I've ever solved. And that appeared in the Galactic Puzzle Hunt in 2018. And we've been waiting for somebody to create the video that Woofer ZFG has created for literally years. Neither Mark nor I could ever have done it justice in terms of our ability to make computer graphics work and my friend Neil Talbot has let me down for the last four years Neil um, but Woofer ZFG has saved the day and we will release that video in the next day or so uh, on the channel so look out for that that is going to be very cool I'm looking forward to the comments on that already and that is all the news so I get to do windmill now let me read you the rules normal Sudoku rules apply Digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb end. So that's normal thermo rules. So that means that if this cell is a two, then what we have to do is make sure as mercury would rise, as the temperature rises, so must our digits increase as we move up the thermometer. So this square could be a four, that square could be a seven. That would be a totally legitimate way of filling in the thermo, but I doubt it will be correct. We will see at the end of the puzzle. Um, in cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage, and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So those four cells add up to 18. And what you can't do is 
something like that. Because although these fours don't seem to break the rules of Sudoku, they do break the rules about the cage. You can't repeat a number in a cage, so don't do that. You'll get the puzzle wrong. Um, uh, digits cannot repeat on the main diagonal marked in blue. Ah, right, yes, okay. Yesterday we had both main diagonals marked. This one, we've only got this diagonal. So basically, we can't repeat a digit on this diagonal. The corollary of that means, well, implies that um, that's got to be a set of the digits one to nine once each. And digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow circle. So those three cells there, let's imagine these were one, two, and three. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So we put 6 in the circle and that's how arrows work. Now, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. I will adjust my glasses and say, let's get cracking. And my first thought about this puzzle actually is about these 21 cages. Because I remember in Kashmir there were two I'm sure there were cages. I don't think they were on the negative diagonal. I thought they were in on the positive diagonal. In fact, I, now I think about it, I think it was something like this pattern. And I think there was a diagonal line. And we had to constantly think about how these cages interact. So there's going to be something going on between those 21 cages. Um, and Although maybe I should take the low hanging fruit. Yeah, let's take low hanging fruit first. These circles have got to be at least six because we, each of these arrow strings is, is, is summing three different digits. So we've already looked at it in the example. The minimum we could make these cells would be one, two, and three. So both of those circles have to add up to at least six. Um, yeah, so... Hmm. There's definitely something around these 21 cages because I can now see that they might well have to be different in terms of their composition. There aren't a great many ways of making 21 with three different Sudoku digits. You can make, you can make 21 without a 9 with 6, 7, 8. Otherwise, you have to have a 9 in the sum which means the other two digits have to sum to 12 without using a 9, so they have to be 4, 8, or 5, 7. So there are three ways of making 21 in three different Sudoku digits. Now, what you can't do, I've seen here, is you can't do this, because that will break box 5 now, because on this diagonal we'd have to put 6, 7, and 8 in, and we can't put them here, because then we'll force those two squares to have to both be equal to 9. So, so these can't both be six, seven, eight, but could they both be say nine, seven, five? That would make these have to be six and eight. which is tricky actually. In fact, that's, ah, right. Oh, right, okay, sorry. Right, I'm doing this the wrong way around. Uh, I was about to use a euphemism for that that's probably not, not acceptable in polite company. company. Um, so I won't use it. Um, but, yes, okay, let's, let me just abandon for a moment my thinking around 21 cages. Because I think that the issue that I've got with repeating 21 cage combinations actually might be clarified a bit by thinking more about our circles here. Because, yes, yes, right, here, let me ask a question. How many repeated digits are there? in those six cells. Oh, that's a terrible choice of color. I can't see the arrow. Let's try that instead. In fact, I think red is quite good for showing up arrows. Yes, I'll use red. So um, how many digits are repeating in these red cells? Now, if your answer to that is zero, or if you're thinking it might be zero, that is not the correct answer. And that is because if these six cells were all, six digits were all different, then the minimum we could make these cells would be the triangular number for six. Now, if you add up one, two, three, four, five, and six, you'll get 21. 
And that means these circles have to sum to 21. And there is no way of doing that using Sudoku digits. The maximum we can make these two cells would be an 8 and a 9, which add up to 17. So we know that there must be a repeated digit, at least one repeated digit in the red. So this, whatever's in here, there must be a repeat of at least one of those digits in here. But hang on, could there be a repeat of two digits? Well, the answer to that is clearly not. Because if there's two repeats on here, where are we going to put those digits in the middle box? Well, the answer is that they have to go in these three cells. They could never go in the circle, because if you had sort of one and two here and one and two here, and you, you, can, you can, it's fairly clear, hopefully, that you can't put either of the digits on the arrow in their own circle. That will not work. Um, so, so you can never have two repeats because you'd have to have a simultaneous one and two in that middle cell. And there are no such things in Sudoku, or at least not in this Sudoku, as Schrodinger cells, cells that have, are both alive and dead at the same time. That's just ridiculous. So that means that these, between the red digits here, there is one digit that repeats. Um, and that digit goes in the middle cell of the grid by Sudoku. Now, given that we know that this is a maximum of an 8-9 pair, that means the maximum size of the red, these, these arrows, is obviously 17. And 17, you always need a 1, a 2, and a 3, I'm about to say, is 3. Yeah, because if you go 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, that adds up. Oh, but I've got to have a repeated digit here, so I can't use 3. No, I can't use 3. Because if I go, uh, if I try and uh, do something like this and go 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, then that, that adds up to 18 which would require double nine in the middle box. It's too many. So you can't do one, two, four, five, and double three. So that means this digit is a one or a two in the middle of the grid. So there is a repeated one or a repeated two on these arrows. Now, so the minimum sum on these arrows is now with a one repeat. So we could, the absolute minimum we could go is one, two, three, repeat the one, four, five, which adds up to 15 plus one is 16. Right, so that's beautiful because that means if the minimum sum of these six cells is 16, and it is, we can't put six in the circles. So these are sevens, eights, and nines. They could be seven, nine. They can't be, oh, they can't be seven, no, they can't be 7, 8. They can't be 7, 8. Because if they're 7, 8, although they... Yeah, they don't get, we, don't get the, we don't get the arrows adding up to enough. We know that the arrows... We have a double 1, a 2, 3, 4, 5 at an absolute minimum, which is 15 plus 1, which is 16. So these two digits... It can't be 7, 8. So there is now a 9 in these two cells. It's either 9, 7 or 9, 8. which is a bit weird. It's just a bit weird because, well, no, actually it's not that weird. It's not that weird. No, I take that back. Nine, seven is 16, which is the minimum, which is fine. Okay, it's just, I think that it's the absence of the ability for double eight that feels a bit weird to me, but it shouldn't do. So, so now, surely, said I, Surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what they're at is on this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment. On this mystery explore, tis the wind and nothing more. Um, ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Shh, stop it, Simon. Um, no, but I won't use the word surely again. Now there must be something going on with these 21 cages. Okay. 
Well, let's... Well, now, okay, the simple deduction now is these are different. Because whatever this is, if it was the same as this, where would the blue digits go on this diagonal? And now it's very clear, isn't it? You'd have to put them in these three cells. And there cannot possibly be a blue digit that's a 1 or a 2. Because if you put 1 or 2 in a 21 cage, the other two digits will have to add up to at least 19, and that's impossible. So that means that, that, means that these are different. But I'm going to allege that they have to have a common digit. Because if we've got six, seven, eight, four, eight, nine, and five, seven, nine, there's always commonality between between those digits. And I suppose the way the, the way to prove that would be to say, well, if if there wasn't a common digit between blue and yellow, then the blue and yellow digits would add up to forty-two. Is it possible to make six different Sudoku digits add up to 42? No, it's not. The most they could add up to is 39 if we use 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and 4. So that's not true. So there is a common digit here. Now, there can't be two common digits. This is interesting. Because if there was two common digits between these two these cages, there would be a third common digit because they both have the same sum. So, for example, if we said, OK, both of these cages have to have six and seven in them to have two common digits. Well, obviously, the third digit is going to have to be eight to get to 21 in both cases. And that's going to mean we've got three common digits. So there is only one common digit between these cages. And that common digit is going to go in one of those two cells. Ah, ah. Please tell me that common digit is high. Is the is the common digit high? It must be, mustn't it? Yeah, the only overlapping digits between the combinations is a high digit. So, so what I'm thinking now is, if you have four, eight, nine, and you're then going to say, okay, well, there's got to be a common overlapping digit between four, eight, nine and either 579 or 678, the digit that's overlapping is always a 7, 8 or a 9. And that must must be important because that means we've got a virtual 789 triple in box 5. So hang on. What, what I'm saying is that there is definitely a common digit. So there's a digit in here, but I don't know what it is. So I'm going to use... I want to use a. I don't really want to put a color on a color. I'm going to use the letter tool. I'm going to say there's a digit in there, which is the digit A, and there's a digit in there, which is the digit A, and digit A goes in one of those two cells by Sudoku in the middle box because of the diagonal. Now I think digit A has to be a seven, eight, or a nine. Is that? It is true, isn't it? It just is true. The only common digits, if we if we look at the options, uh, we've got four, eight, nine, five, seven, nine, and six, seven, eight. You know, and you're going. We're going to say there has to be a common digit. You can see that the common digit is never the four, five, or six between these combinations. It's always these digits. So that means that a I don't have a way of notating this, but A is equal to 7, 8, or 9, which means that in this box, we've now got a 7, 8, 9 virtual triple between those four cells. Um, actually, maybe that doesn't do very much. What is that meant to be doing? Oh no, this is where I'm going to get totally stuck, isn't it? Because that's that's actually a bit... Hmm, I don't know what that means. So... Gosh, everything to there felt really... 
I felt like I was, I was, it was flowing quite well and I was doing all right. And now I've just totally died a death. So, so, oh, actually, no, hang on. A is not nine, is it? Because I've got a nine in one of these. So A is seven or eight. Does that matter? So there's a common, oh, maybe I was, so maybe I've got to look at the combinations then. So if there was a common seven, then this would have to be, well, it could be six, seven, eight, or five, seven, nine. But that, if there was a common seven, this would be either six, seven, eight, or five, seven, nine. And this would either be six, seven, eight, or five, seven, nine. So let's just have, let's just put them in and see whether that breaks the world. So now there's a seven in one of this. This is an eight, nine pair. Um, what's that doing? If this is an eight, nine pair, there's an eight down here. There's a nine up here. But we don't know anything about sixes and fives. I don't see why that's broken. Does anyone see why that's broken? And hopefully you can throw your voice back through time into my brain. Um, I'm not hearing anything, so I don't think anyone's invented any uh, time machine for voices. And I don't think my brain is telling me that that's broken for some other reason. So let's look at the other alternative, which is that we've got um, a common... Well, A equals 8 rather than 7. So if A equals 8... The combinations for 21 are 6, 7, 8 again. And this one is 4, 8, 9 now. So this time you'd have a... So this would be a 7, 9 pair this time. So 7 would have to go in one of these cells. And 9 would have to go up here. Oh, so 9 always goes with the 6, 7, 8. Which is perhaps not surprising because there's always a nine off the diagonal in box five. Uh, but, oh, well, actually, let, let's start with the first deduction, which is that one of these is always six, seven, eight, then. So, so whatever A is, A is seven or A is eight, one of the 21 cages is always six, seven, eight. And then the other 21 cage is either 479 or 489 or 579. And then that throws a 9 next to the 678 on the diagonal. And it throws the other high digit. So if it was 579 into the other 21 cage, then the missing high digit is 8, but that would go on the diagonal next to that. But, unless I'm missing something, it might not even be something obvious, I don't see a problem with either of these combinations. So, hmm. can only have one common digit between these combinations. So if this was, oh no, I've looked at this. If that was 16, I can do that with a one easily. If it's 17, I can do it with a two. Um, and this is not helped either by the fact that I don't know where the, I know one of these is six, seven, eight, but I don't know which side it's on. And it would be, if for example, this 6, 7, 8 was here. Let's just have a look at that for a second. Because if that 6, 7, 8 is down at the bottom of the grid in this one, then that, because we know 9 is next to it on the diagonal, this cell, which is a circle, would have a maximum value of 5. And that would put that, move that down a bit. Oh. Oh, that's really clever. Right, hang on. 
whichever way the six, seven, eight is, it's it, this is weird. This thermometer works a bit. It works a bit similarly to the bulb of the the bulb of the arrow in the sense that if I knock high digits out of the tip of a thermo, it's pushing the bulb down. And if I knock high digits out of the the bulb of an arrow, I'm pushing the arrow down. So is this about row five? I'm not sure actually. I don't think there's too much pressure on 18s and 17s. Uh, is that right? You can't. Ah, uh, this is. There is something here. Actually, there is something here. The high. It's about high digits. I think it's about high digits in row five. I just want to have a think about this. So, if we've got six, seven, eight up here, then we know nine is in one of those. What have we got down here? in that instance. And the problem is we don't know. We'd either have 579, but if we do have 579, because this was 678, if this is, oh, if this is 678, we get seven in these cells. Oh, hang on, I'm going crazy. Let me think about, I'm gonna actually have to put this in again, aren't I? Sorry, if this is 678 and this is five, seven, nine, the common digit is seven. So A is seven. So we have an eight off the diagonal. So we get an eight in one of these. And obviously that works sort of um, vice versa, doesn't it? Mutatis mutandis in the sense that if this five, seven, nine was up here and the six, seven, eight was down here, we, we it would just revert you know we'd have the eight on the diagonal up here now if this on the other hand is whoops four eight nine now we have common eight so a is eight this is a seven nine pest we don't have seven on the diagonal in box five so we'd have seven alongside here yes this this is lovely this is lovely so the point i think is that Whatever you have in your 21 cage, you're gonna have two of the three high digits, whatever, whichever version of the 21 cage you, you put in. So whether you're using 984, 957, or 678, you have two of the high digits in the 21 cage. But the other high digit is going to get pushed onto the diagonal next to the cage by the interaction logic that we've got working through box five. And that means that it's not possible for this cell or this cell to be nine, seven or eight. Because however we arrange the six, seven, eights and the nine, four, four, eight, nines or the five, seven, nines, we, we lock all the high digits into those cells which means this is a maximum of six. So that's a maximum of six, which means that's a maximum of five, which means that's a maximum of four. And this is gonna have an effect on this row, I think, because now, same logic, that's a maximum of six. So that's a maximum of five. So where does the seven, eight, nine go in row five now? Because they can't go here, or here because that we know we've got the virtual quadruple in box box five so they're not in those five cells so the three the three high digits have to occupy these cells and so that's got to be a seven eight pair da da That's right, isn't it? If you can't put seven, eight or nine into those five and you've got you've got to therefore put two of them into one of these cages. Well, you can't put seven and eight in there because this would have to be double one. So you have to put them in here. That's the only way it will work. This is just so clever. So that's seven, eight. This is one, two. There's a nine over here in this cage. 
which must be accompanied by a 1, because we, the other three cells have got to add up to 8. So we've either got 1, 2, 5, or 1, 3, 4 in the 17 cage. We've got What have we got now then? I would really love to know what the ordering of the, the blue and the yellow cages is. Um, five, can I put five? Oh, I can put five, that can be one, two, five. I can't put six in the 17 cage. I can't, right, so six is in one of those two cells in the central row. Uh, okay. So, what do we do next? We could... Right, I know what we do now. I know what we do now. This is iterative. Or it's at least partially iterative, because now, if I've got six off the diagonal in box five, and I know one of these, um, one of the 21 cages is six, seven, eight, then the other, the, the other box of box uh, one and nine, the one that doesn't have six, seven, and eight in it, has a six on its diagonal. And if that's true, then we know that not only a nine, eight, and seven in these little pyramids we're building in both boxes one and nine, not only is nine, eight, seven in them, but sixes as well. Because either you have a six in the six, seven, eight cage, or you have six on the diagonal. Only one of those things is true. And that means that this is not a six, and it means this is not a six. So if this is not a six, this comes down to a maximum of five. And now this is pushing down the thermo. So this comes to a maximum of three. And therefore this one now can't be six, that's a maximum of five. So this is now a maximum of four. Now, do we get the five in here? So if we, oh uh, no, we've made, uh, Oh, I hope that was going to be iterative. I, I don't know if it is actually, because I can put five in the 17 cage if it's got a one and a two with it. So that would, the only way, the only way that I can put five in here with the nine is if this is a one, two pair. And that would, that would put this digit into one of, no, would it put it into exactly this cell? If this is a one, two pair, this digit can't be on the diagonal, can't be in the 21 cage. Yes, it would go there. Um, there's probably something wrong with that, but I can't see what it is immediately. This this is a maximum of five, so it's a minimum of three. It can't be less than three because we're summing two digits on the arrow. So this is a three, four, or a five. And these cells have got to be from one, two, three, and four. Now this is a maximum of three. So this is one, two, three, this is two, three, four, this is three, four, five, okay. So we've very nearly got a, uh, a triple in this row. Hmm. Okay. Leroy, I can already tell you to take a bow, my friend. This is really, it's so clever, this. It really is. Oh, where does that digit go in box one? I've got a one, two pair here. Yes, yeah, look at this digit. Well, one of these is red, 
So where does red go in this box? It can't go in the 21 cage. It can't go on the diagonal. It goes there. That is a 1 or a 2. Which means this is no longer red. So red moves up to one of these two cells. We've almost, look, we've almost locked red out of this 17 cage. It can't go there and it can't go in those two. So if red is in the... So if... If red was 1, which we know must be in the 17 cage, red has to go here. And that would mean this would have to be a 2-3 pair because it can't add up to more than 5. So if red is 1, we get a 1-2-3, something like that. Oh, that almost looks correct though, doesn't it? So... Okay, what do we do now? Uh, sorry about this. I am not spotting what I'm meant to be doing. So, okay. Have we got a way of knowing whether this is 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4? If it was 1, 3, 4 then this would be a virtual quintuple on 1, 2, 3, 4, and 9. So these squares would have to be 5, 6, 7, and 8. Well, that looks possible, doesn't it? And what is it that's going to reveal the nature of A to us? You can, I can now almost see how this puzzle's been built. It's very, very beautiful. The I, I love the way this thermo and this arrow sort of have the opposite effect. Um, but the, it, but it works, out, it works out to be the same effect in, in row five, pushing these numbers down. So now what we shall say is, yeah, and it looks like, it looks to me like this thermo has been added afterwards because everything else is very symmetrically logical so this feels like the disambiguating thermometer to finish the puzzle off so probably that is late stage of the solve um, if that was a three and this was a one two pair this would have to be a one and then that would have to be one, three, four. No, well, it would be, no, it would be three, four, well, three, four, nine. And if this, that would be a three. So this would be a three, this would be a nine, this would be a four. Uh, the problem with all this is it, it doesn't immediately feel broken to me. Something's nagging me there about how many low digits there are in row five. I'm not sure. Um, which one of these is red? Okay, so the other one, the one that one of these that's not red is on the diagonal there. Oh, ah, oh, for goodness sake. Right, okay, I've spotted something. Right, this is a red digit and another digit that's the opposite of red. So let's make this red and purple, which I realise suddenly is not very... I don't think red and purple are particularly distinguishable. Maybe I'll change those green digits to purple and I'll make this red and green instead. So, red and green... Um, that's probably a saying red and green should never be seen or something. But um, anyway, red and green go here. So where does green go in this box? It goes in one of those two cells. Now that means it's not on this diagonal in box uh, 9. It's not in the 21 cage because it's a 1 or a 2. And it's not there because, well, the, it can't be a 1 or a 2. We can't make these, these arrows add up to less than 3. 
So that means that green is in one of those places. But look where red is as well. Red is not in there, it's not there. So that is a red-green pair in box in box 9. Now, we know that the reds and the greens are 1s and 2s. So this digit's not able to be a 1 or a 2 anymore. There's a 1 or a 2 in its row. And that means what? So, has that helped us know the nature of the world? Um, so, do we now know? Oh, okay. I know what we know now because I looked at this before. I can't, where do I put five in this row? I don't put it at the end because if this is a five nine pair, we worked out that had to be a one two pair and that's gonna break that cell. So there's no five in this domino, which means the five in this row accompanies its friend the six in the middle box. So that's a five six pair. Now. I don't know if that matters. So these digits are from 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 9s. Uh, I think I'd better pencil mark that in just because I've got nothing else that's occurring to me to do. So 4 in this row is not here and it's not here. So it's in one of those cells. So that's not able to be four anymore. This is down to one, two or three. And we're almost cooking with gas, aren't we? And I've got a feeling, hang on, if I put Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What's going on here now? So if this now, if this is one, two, five, nine, I just feel I've got far too many ones and twos in the world. Maybe I haven't actually. So if this is one, two, five, nine, then it has got red in it. So this cell would have to be red. But it's also got to, so if this is red, this is red. And now I've got to put green in here because it's got one, two, it's got one and two in it. So if this is red, this is green. And now green would have to go here. Yeah, oh, I'll tell you why this breaks. Because if this is, if this is, right, let's do this slowly, actually, because it's quite complicated. If, so red, red forces red here. Now that forces this square to be red, and it forces this square to be green. And But we know that if this is 1, 2, 5, 9, it's got to have a green in it. So the green would have to go into that cell. But now... I've got a one and a two in this box, which means the minimum sum of those two squares would be three plus four is seven, and that cannot be a seven. So this fails. So actually, we should unwind all this and say we actually now know that this is one, two, three. Um, it's not two, there's no two in here. It's one, three, four, nine is this cage. And we know the nine is in this domino. So this is a one, three, four, uh, now, so surely we can do something with this. This feels incredibly constrained now. Let me just figure this out. Um, well, I know one of these is a four from the logic we did earlier. So that is not a four. So this is now down to one or three.
<laughs> Come on, break! Um, this cannot be a four, because if this is a four, that's a one three pair, and that will break that cell doing what we've just done. So this is either a three or a five. It can't be a three, can it? If it's a three, this is a one two pair, and I almost refuse to believe that's possible. If this is three, this is one two, that would have to be a one. So this would be a three. This is a one, two, this is one, two. Uh, no, hang on. Is that working or not? Now I'm getting confused. I might have to do it longhand. I can't quite see it. If that's three, that becomes one. So that becomes four. No, it doesn't work. This doesn't work, does it? Because now I've got too many low digits in this row. I've got one, two, three here, one, two here, and these have to be a one, three pair. And in fact, that square's got, well, that would be a no. No, hang on, I'm, I've miscalculated that. This would have to be nine. Yeah, this would have to be low. This has to be one or two. Yeah, we've got far too many low digits. I, I, because making this three forces this to be one or two. So let's just back that up and see if we can if I can now see it a bit more clearly. If that's three, this becomes a one or a two, which means this is a three. And now I've got a one, two, three triple here, which means this needs to be four, nine. But, and I, well, the other way of then seeing the problem is that because this is a three, I can't put three in that box because this would have to be a four nine and I can't put three in the tetromino shape. So this is a five. That's quite complicated. I totally accept that. Um, now, if this is a five, do I now know what this is then? Oh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I do. I do know what this is because if that's one four, don't I have the same problem? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, this is right. This is five now. We're actually getting somewhere here. This is five. I, and that's my first digit. I've just noticed. That's my first digit. Did we? I wonder who, who would have betted that would be the first digit. Not me. But anyway, five here. If this is four one to make five, it would have to be this way round. But now now this is broken because this contains a four and a one. And this would become a Schrodinger cell and have to be both digits. So that means that this is not one four. It means this is not four. It means this is a two three pair. If this is a two three pair, where does the three go in the 17 cage? It has to go there. I've now got my second digit, my third digit. That's now one by Sudoku. This is a four nine pair by the power of Grayskull. Um, now, oh, Bobbins. Oh, come on. Oh, this, right, look, 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 that's a one, that's a two. But we don't, do we know what, um, oh, we, well, we're starting to make some progress in learning about the nature of red and green. So this is no longer a one. So the one in the middle row is in the middle, and therefore red is one. So that means... The, well, it means green is two, I suppose. So we now know that. So green is two. So two is in one of those cells. We now know that this is therefore red. This is therefore green. We know that. What did we get rid of from here? One. So this can't be two anymore. And that can't be three anymore. That gets redified. Um, oh no! <laughs> it's, it's stopped again, hasn't it? Uh, okay. So. Hmm. Okay. I sort of feel like I must know some things about this grid now that are more profound than the thoughts that are occurring in my brain. So two in the middle box is in one of two places. It's got to be in one of those cells because it 
it's it's not on the negative diagonal anymore. Two, no, we don't know that two isn't on. Two can be on one of these arrows. Do we now know, do we know what the repeated digit is between the A things now? Now we know this is a five. We know this is not five, seven, nine, but it could still be six, seven, eight. And that could be five, seven, nine up there. So we don't, I don't think we do know that yet. So there must be some other little trick we've got to work out. Good grief. Okay. Um, what is it that we're missing? What is it I'm missing? Can we... Wow, I don't know, actually. I'm coming up totally totally dry when I'm thinking about this. Um, oh, here's the point. Yes, got it. I've got it. I've got it. Thank you. Thank you, brain. Right. Five is here. This is a five, six pair. So five in box one is in one of those cells, which means this is four, which means that cannot be four. So that's four, three, two. That's three. That's two. Two is green. So two gets greened in those cells. Now, now neither of our blue and yellow cages contains a five. So we now know the combination of blue and yellow is a six, seven, eight cage in one instance and a four, eight, nine cage in the other instance. And that one cannot be four, eight, nine. So this must be six, seven, eight. This must be 489. Now the repeated digit, A in other words, A is now 8. So 8 is in one of these two cells, which means 8 is not in the circles, which means this is a 7-9 pair, which means it's adding up to 16, which means that we now know this has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with a repeated 1. And that square there actually can't be 1, 2, or 5. So that's 3 or 4. Um, and this might be our chance to solve this now. Let's have a think. What can we do? Well, I suppose we now know those three cells, don't we? So those three digits are now a three. Oh, a three. Well, the three must go there by Sudoku. And this has got to be a six, seven pair. So this is no longer a two or a three. Two has to go there now because we know we knew two was in one of these cells. So let's do that and see if that helps us. Let's tidy up our pencil marks. Uh, this is not a two. This is not a one, a three, or a four. I don't quite. The, the geometry is slightly different, isn't it? So I don't know what's on the diagonal. I don't think, at least, in box one. I still need three, five, and nine. Oh, oh yeah, I've got to put three in this box. Where does it go? I've got a three on the diagonal already. So this is, so now I do know what's in the, on the diagonal. It's a five, nine pair. And if I know that, well, let me just see. Well, therefore I know these two squares in the middle box. They have got to be eight and, don't be nine. No, it's not nine. That's a relief. Is it one? Is it one? It is one. No, no, it's not. I've got one here. I was wondering where the one was in the periphery. It's not one. It's four. Yeah, it's four. Oh, that's no good. Oh, okay. So this is a four eight pair. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so whichever one of these is four is going to determine which one of these can be one, two, four, adding to seven. Now, what about those two squares then? They've got to be a two, two and a three. I've not put three in the middle box. So that's three and that's two. 
Oh, no, it's the other way round then. Ah, oh, it's lovely. Right. This becoming green is massive because now I can't make this a seven arrow because it would need to be one, two, four. So this needs to be the seven arrow because one of these is the seven arrow. So that's two. Uh, this is, well, that top digit is a one or a four. Two, one, four, that fixes the eight. That fixes the four here, which gives me a three. So we've now got a th an arrow with a three on it that's add and no two on it that has to add up to nine. So this needs to be a one, five pair. Um, and this is a nine arrow, this is a seven arrow. And maybe, maybe we're getting somewhere now. Four in that box is there by Sudoku. So we need five, six, and nine. Nine, nine is here by Sudoku. Five and nine get placed in box one. This is five and six. Which means these two squares are seven and eight, which means these two squares are five and six, a certain symmetry going on here. Um, hmm. Oh dear. Oh, this one five pairs doing the middle box, so that becomes a six. So now we need seven, eight, and nine at the top of column six. We need three, five, and six at the top of that column. That can't be five, that can't be three. That can't be three either, actually. So three gets placed. We get a five, six pair here. That can't be nine. So it's, is it this bulb? Oh, the bulb, yeah, okay. The bulb can't be one, two, three, or four. So it's at least five. So it can't be that. So five, six, seven. Or six, or that could be six or seven. This could be six, seven, or eight. And this could be eight or nine. Now, can we do any better than that? We have got ah, is there something going? I can't see it. Maybe there is, but no, I'm not quite seeing whether that's resolved or not. So we might have to look somewhere else. Where is going to be the easy easy places to get a win here? Ones don't seem to be that good. Twos are all green. I have got a lot of twos. Yeah, I've got four twos looking at box three, so I can put the two in there. And I've now got eight twos, so I must be able to get the two in that box as well. So, okay, all twos get filled in. Threes, let's look at threes. I've got loads of those. Yeah, I've got all of them apart from that one. That three gives me a one here, which does the one and the five, which is nice to know. Now, we know that red is a one, so that loses its its oneness. That gains a redness. And we can get, ah, I see, we've got the one in this box, which gets the one in this box, which gets me a four here, which loses its redness. And that should be, I think, all of the ones done. So we've done all the ones, all the twos, I think all the threes, we said. How about fours? Well, okay, I can do some pencil marking. I'm not sure I can do much better than that though. Ah, okay. Fours are aligning a little bit in columns eight and nine between these two dominoes. So that cell at the bottom can't be a four. So this gets to be eight or nine. I still don't think that's good enough. Um, what's this cell? That cell is five, six, seven, or eight. Ah, okay, that's a good cell, because now look at this column. That is a five, six, seven, eight quadruple. So you can't put eight in those cells. So that means that's an eight. It means this is a four, nine pair. This eight is knocking eight out of this cell on the thermo. Now, if that can't be eight, is that in any way useful? It can't be eight. That can't be seven anymore, can it? So that gets, I oh, see that gets knocked down to five or six. And if that's five or six, that forces this to be seven now, which does a little bit of tidying up. 
So now this top cell is a 4 or a 9, both of which seem to be possible. This cell here is now 8 or 9, which gives me an 8-9 pair in row 2, which makes this a 6. Gosh, this is still not easy at all. This is a 7-8 pair, which makes this a 9, this an 8, this a 7. That becomes a 4, that becomes a 4, that becomes a 9. And now we should, we should be able to write that in. That's a 6 in the corner by Sudoku. Which means I've got a 7 on the diagonal, a 6 here, an 8 here, a 7 here, a 6 here, a 5 here, a 5 here, and we're just left with 8s and 9s. So the 9 in this box goes here, that becomes an 8, and the top of the grid is very nearly full. I've got a 7 8 pair in column 2, I've got, ah, I've got a 6 here as well. So that's a 6, that's a 5, this is a 7 or an 8. This column, or the, oh no, let's have a look at this column, because this 7, 8 pair means I need 4, 5, and 9 into these cells, so we can pencil mark that straight in. That's not 5. Bother. <laughs> okay, these are 6, 7, and 8 then. And that's a 7, 8 here, so that becomes 6. So this has to be a 9 by Sudoku. It's 4, 5, or 9 from its row, and it sees 4, 5 in the column. So that becomes 9, that becomes 9, that becomes 4, that becomes 5, that becomes 9, that becomes 4, that becomes 4. This is a 7 or an 8, it's not an 8, so we get 8, 7, 7, 7, 8, 7, 8 at the top. And if I've not made any errors, I still need 6 and 8 here, and that looks like 8, and that looks like 6. Wow! one hour one hour but i think it's finished <laughs> wow <laughs> that is just sensational all of the praise let's go back and revisit this praise from these fabulous solvers um every second is full of magical moments juicy logic all over the place fully logical too well yes absolutely take a bow Leroy. yes take a bow do we should be genuflecting before you my friend that was just beautiful it was i mean this is this is how you get the great solvers and setters of the world to admire your work you produce something like that absolutely sensational start to finish just breathtaking breathtakingly beautiful so i hope you enjoyed that sorry it's a slightly long video again um but again what, what is the point of cracking the cryptic if it's not to showcase puzzles like this? And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.